there is a whole lot that goes into belly fat, right? It's not as simple as we all think. And there's a lot more to the whole cortisol belly fat relationship than we think. It's a pretty complex situation. Cortisol is not inherently bad. Cortisol is actually good. It helps us. But when cortisol is somewhat out of control or when it's tied in with a low carb diet improperly because of improper mineralization, that's when we run into problems. And that's when cortisol definitely can contribute to belly fat in a lot of different ways. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to break down A, what you need to be wary of, but B, what you can do to hopefully prevent these random surges in cortisol that don't need to exist. I'll break it all down for you. have a full understanding of glucocorticoids, of cortisol, and of course your belly fat. You're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays, 7 a.m. Pacific time. Also, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live so you can do some Q&As with me. All right, let's go ahead and let's talk about this for a minute. The first thing we do need to understand before any of this makes sense and we can tie it in with belly fat and all that is the fact that cortisol is a good thing, okay? It comes as a result of any kind of acute energy demand or any kind of stress. So it's always simple for me to use the good old fashioned bear chasing you analogy. If a bear is chasing you, you're gonna be stressed out. So you're gonna have a big cortisol release. But what's happening is you have an energy demand that goes along with that. Okay, cortisol releases and it tells your body to act, to do something, to sprint or to fight or flight. The problem is a lot of times we have a cortisol spike that doesn't directly correlate with a utilization of energy. So we have a spike in cortisol, but we're not actually acting upon or exercising that energy that is being given to us. And that's how things kind of circumnavigate the system and cause fat storage. So here's what happens when you have a stress response first. When you first get stressed out, or you first have any kind of impetus for this, you have something known as corticotropin releasing hormone that is released out of your hypothalamus, portion of your brain. This triggers the pituitary to release adrenocorticotropin hormone. And just like the name sounds like, adrenocorticotropin triggers the adrenals to release glucocorticoids. Okay, once the adrenal glands release the glucocorticoids, that's how we have the whole chain reaction of adrenaline, noradrenaline, and of course, cortisol. All starts at the adrenals, but really starts at our brain. But then what ends up happening from there is the cortisol triggers more blood glucose into the bloodstream, which triggers another reaction of something known as aldosterone that triggers more sodium into the bloodstream temporarily to increase blood pressure. It's again, all a good thing to get nutrients and energy where it needs to go so that we can fight or flight. But again, if we have artificial surges of cortisol that really shouldn't be there, then we're getting all this influx of energy that we're not using. So it's causing problems, high blood sugar, fat storage, particularly in the belly because it's all kind of going back to the liver for processing. Okay, that's how belly fat gets stored from stress. There's ways that we can control it though. We have to go back and we have to look at aldosterone again. Aldosterone could be a big culprit for us. See, aldosterone's job, for lack of a better way of saying it, is telling the kidneys to hold on to sodium. Now, I am not a medical doctor and I don't play one on TV and I don't know all there is to know about aldosterone. It's a complicated thing. But aldosterone is a steroid hormone that has a powerful effect on our body retaining sodium. Okay, it tells the kidneys to hold on to sodium. Now this generally occurs alongside cortisol. So when cortisol is released, aldosterone is released. Cortisol kind of triggers glucose to be released, but then aldosterone goes along with it to increase blood pressure to be able to get that blood to where it's going. Definitely not something we want to have happen all the time. So let's talk about something specific that happens when you're on a keto diet. And I might be beating a dead horse here because I've talked about it before, but when you are on keto, you lose a lot of your minerals. You lose a lot of sodium and you lose a lot of potassium and a lot of magnesium because it is the absence of insulin via the keto diet that pressures the kidneys to release extra water and ultimately release extra sodium and other minerals. So you're left in a very mineral deprived state. Well, what we're starting to see now is that when you are deficient in minerals, particularly sodium, it sort of tricks the brain. The brain gets a little bit confused and the brain tells the adrenals to release more of that aldosterone, okay? You're losing minerals, you're, you're deficient in salt. So aldosterone comes in and says, wait, put on the brakes, try to hold on to salt. And thus begins heavy water retention, thus begins feeling bloated and puffy, okay? So sometimes if you are deficient in salt, you actually look worse, okay? You don't 
People think that you cut out Saul or you lose salt and you're automatically going to look leaner and more svelte and tighter and better. No, it's usually the opposite because what salt is left in your body ends up getting retained heavily and it gets retained in the wrong places. But of course, with this chain reaction of causing aldosterone to increase, we also have a subsequent increase in cortisol because a lot of times they just go together. So therefore, being deficient in minerals and deficient in salt triggers your cortisol levels to go up, which causes the whole chain reaction. So literally just being deficient in salt causes your cortisol levels to go up when it shouldn't go up. And that is how there can be that contribution to, of course, belly fat. Now, I always say that on a keto diet or any kind of fasting strategy that you should be getting in a high quality salt. So just so that you guys know, if you're watching this video, uh, Redmond Real Salt is known as probably the highest quality salt that's out there on earth, mined right in Utah, so here in the United States. So there's a special discount down below if you guys want to get some good quality salt. So this is perfect if you're barbecuing, if you're cooking up anything, your keto style, but also those of you that did my three day fasting challenge or have done any kind of fasting before know that salt is one of the few things that you can consume. So Redmond Real Salt is what I consume when I'm fasting. I just sip on salt water throughout the course of the day, but this stuff is high quality, higher quality than Himalayan salt because it doesn't have all the sulfur but also has a more abundant mineral profile and the FDA can actually regulate salt that is mined here in the United States. I've been to their mine, I've seen it, I've seen their operation, it's cool stuff. So I definitely encourage you to check them out down in the description and it's gonna change your cortisol levels simply by implementing that and by having that in your keto journey. So let's talk really quick here about what happens when you're on keto already though. Okay, when you're on keto, of course, yeah, you're losing minerals, but you're already in a little bit of a heightened cortisol state. I hate to break it to you, but fasting and keto put your adrenaline levels up a little bit higher. Now, this is not bad though, okay? Because normally adrenaline causes, again, energy to be pulled from the body and put into the bloodstream so that it can be used for fuel. Now, if you don't have a whole lot of glucose, your body's still gonna pull fat, right? So that's a good thing. So we do want a little bit of adrenaline. We just don't want it to happen at a time when we're sedentary all the time. So when you're fasting, of course, you have cortisol but you're not consuming things. So that cortisol just kind of causes your own tissue and your own energy substrates to just release, go through the body, and then circulate and go back into storage. But if you are having surges of adrenaline and cortisol during times that you're eating, it's basically making it so that you're compounding. You already have nutrients circulating because cortisol is released, and now you're eating and adding on top of that. So your body's going to be having lots to process, which means, of course, it's going to store its body fat easier. So how does salt help this situation? Well, if you're actually having the right amount of minerals in your body, then you allow this to not occur as bad because you don't have as big of swings, and you can control the timing. So again, this isn't just all about just getting salt in, it's about getting all your minerals in, and a lot of your minerals you're gonna end up getting from your dark leafy greens and things like that. So you just need to be paying attention to all of that, and it will make your fat loss happen a lot faster, but it's also gonna make, it's gonna give you less potential to store fat if you ever do come off of keto. So again, not all salt is created equal though. You can't just go and get regular iodized salt. Okay, you need to get a high quality salt, because otherwise you're having unopposed sodium, and you're gonna have this fluid balance is gonna make you puffy and make you watery. It's very important, like typical salt that's gonna be in restaurant food or the white pure bleach table salt is not gonna cut it. Honestly, it's a cheap investment, so check them out down in the description if you wanna check out Red and Real Salt. Second best is gonna be Himalayan, but quite honestly, it's more expensive anyway. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you want me to dive more into the world of cortisol and belly fat, just post it down in the comment section below. I'm happy to dive into this topic more. As always, I'll see you soon and thanks for watching.